Hello sweet friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Cynthia from Very Cherry Cakes and on today's tutorial we're actually walking through how to bake and then how to assemble a mirror glazed cake and this was actually a trending cake or a trending topic back in 2017 I think um, and I actually just got to try this actual recipe or cake trend a few months ago and I documented the process and I actually did wonder in the beginning when I first saw this trend one is it a special type of recipe for the actual cake two can I use buttercream or is it a special type of frosting that goes under the glaze and then three how does it feel and how does it hold up how is it stored and how does it taste so today I will be walking you through the recipe that I used for my cake, the recipe that I used for my frosting, and I will also show you how I added the glaze and how my cake cuts and how it looked in the end. So I hope you're excited and let's get right into the video. Okay, so to preface, I did end up using box cake mix and I did go ahead and use buttercream for the base as far as the bottom before adding the glaze to my cake. I did also make these little chocolate spheres and the other sprinkles I just randomly like have in my house. To start I am adding one stick of unsalted room temperature butter and I also adding four large eggs but I will be adding them one at a time um, and you are going to notice that the mixture is going to get a little bit like clumpy and it's gonna look weird and a lot of people judged it in my Instagram videos they were like you didn't mix the butter right and you know blah 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 whatever but um, at the end the butter does melt when you bake the cake obviously so the texture will not be affected by how weird and goopy this part of the cake is going to look In this step, I just attempted to continue to mix the eggs and the butter a little bit more, but I finally accepted that the mixture will remain this way, and I know that a better way would have probably been to mix each ingredient separate. Regardless, now I'm adding one bag of cake mix. This can be any cake mix that you would like, and the recipe will work um, really the same because cake mix is already mixed to work. That sounded weird, but it's true. Now I'm adding one cup of milk and remember that all these ingredients are at room temperature and for this part we are going to make sure to just mix enough but do not over mix because there is such a thing as over mixing your cake. So I'm going to just mix for a few more minutes. This is sped up so just make sure you know that and as soon as we're done I'm going to color my batter. It has magically been seconds and I am adding one teaspoon of vanilla and for my colors I am using Wilton Violet and Wilton Teal. So I did separate my mixture or my batter into an eyeball of what I think is half and I will just incorporate the color using a spatula but not over mixing. Now I'm going to take my Dough Easy Easy Release Springform Pan and I will go ahead and spray it with a little bit of Wilton Bake Easy Spray. Um, since this is a silicone um, non-stick pan, you don't have to do these steps, but I always do. Sometimes I do add a little bit of flour at the bottom because there are some cakes that caramelize or that have too much sugar and they will stick to the bottom but again this is a glass bottom so I just did that extra step for nothing here is where I'm not super proud of myself because this was my super weird and lame attempt at marbling this cake 
Obviously, there's a lot better techniques where it should have been that I would have scooped in a little bit of purple, left a little bit of space for the green, purple, green, instead of trying to glop this all together and then swirling it with a little spatula or a knife. Because at the end, what happened is that when I split it open, this top part was swirled a little bit, but then the bottom half was only violet. So, take a note. Now comes the fun part of releasing our cake from this pan. It's totally easy. I just took off the little black uh, brooch or like thing that was holding it in place and I just pulled off the edge. Now, if you are serving this at home, you can leave your cake on that glass platter, but I was actually giving this away to someone, so I ended up taking it off of this glass part. And for this part, I'm just going to wing it and just take off what I think is the top so it can be leveled. I did save this and I made a little bit of like cake pops, but um, that's how to level a cake super easy. Just wing it. To fill my box cake, I am using a little bit of buttercream icing. I do have a few recipes and I will link them below. Um, and here I am using, I do recommend to use an ice cream scoop. This is a quarter cup to make sure that you keep your uh, filling to the same level. So if you're making a cake that has more than one tier, not one tier, but more than one layer, you can distribute the frosting evenly. And then here, I'm just going to go ahead and plop the top over. No scientific way, no rhyme or reason, just flop it on over. I do want to stress that my main concern with even trying a mirror glaze cake was that I thought everything was supposed to be like a specific something, like a specific recipe of cake, a specific kind of frosting. But what I'm doing here is I'm basically just crumb coating my cake and immediately after I crumb coated in this part, I did go ahead and place it into the freezer for about five minutes to make sure that that crumb coat was nice and firm. And now I'm adding my final coating of icing. And for this part, you do want to be precise because since we are covering our cake essentially at the top with a gelatin mixture, it's going to take the shape of whatever shape your cake has. So if there's any imperfections, the gelatin will flow right around it and show it right through, girl. So make sure that this part is as perfect as you can make it. Once you get your cake as perfect as you can or as perfect as you want, go ahead and pop it in the freezer for about 10 minutes just to make sure that your buttercream sets. Now for this part, I did not film how I made this uh, mirror glaze, but if you want a video, let me know in the comments below. To start my glazing, I did go ahead and place a four inch little round cake pan on top of a cookie sheet to catch like the excess glaze. And I did pour my glaze into this measuring cup because I thought it would be a little bit easier, but at the end, I just started pouring from the original containers so for this part have fun don't really follow any steps you can do whatever you want and i really love this cake and the look of it because if you guys have been following me for a while i don't really like perfect things um and this is basically what a mirror glaze can be obviously you can use one color but i used a multitude of colors and i like that so I hope it looks fun, I hope it's cute, but this is what I did. I just started pouring on a bunch of different colors. I do want to add that if you do have a lot of excess um, mirror glaze like I did here, you can definitely save it, and I did, and I actually colored it 
uh, black or darker so you can get a different color because obviously once it's like this it's going to all just mesh together and you won't be able to separate the colors so you can color it a darker color and use it for other treats. For this next part I did want to add a little bit of glam and I did go ahead and add a little bit of this glitter. You can find these glitters at your local baking store or like your local baking supply store. There are more safe and edible versions out there and I will list them in the description box below but it was a tiny bit amount so it's really not that harmful so don't go you know yelling at me in the comments. Um, here's a close-up of how cute and cool the cake ended up looking, or at least I think it's cool. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As part of my decoration, I decided to make tiny ball truffles or cake truffles, so I used the trimmings of the top of my cake and I'm basically inserting them to these little half spheres and the white plate right over there is actually hot. So I placed it into the microwave for approximately 10 to 20 seconds and that's what you see me doing here is I'm actually sliding this half sphere of chocolate onto the plate causing the chocolate to melt and letting me merge both of the spheres together to form the little balls. I know that was so weird, like I sounded like a robot explaining that, but it just, that's what I did, you know? So you just gotta trust me on that. And to finish off my cake, I'm going to just randomly place these little truffles all over my cake. I also did use a little bit of those uh, golden rod sprinkles and I did splatter some gold onto my cake. I think it looks super, super good. What would you change about this design? Is there anything in particular that you thought was cooler than the other? Let me know what you think, but I think it turned out great. And actually, I think it would look pretty cool as a shirt. These little things that I'm placing on there are almond um, candies. So they have an almond inside and it's like a chocolate coating on the outside and I'm just painting them slightly gold. And here comes the part where you can see that I did a horrible job at marbling this cake, but I'm actually cutting into my cake and I'm going to cut out a slice so you can see how it looks on the inside. And I do want to stress that the coating on the outside is gelatin like we explained in the beginning. So your cake must remain cold until it is eaten. I really hope that you liked this tutorial. Definitely let me know if there's anything from this video that you would like me to expand on. Definitely also leave your questions in the comment box below. Don't forget to, to subscribe before you go. Like this video if you liked it and share it with your friends. Thank you so much and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!